Peace to the Righteous Tongues podcast. This week on the Righteous Tongues podcast, host FDT, the BX Boy, and D-Bell discuss rapper Offset's recent comments that older hip-hop artists should be kissing his feet in regards to hip-hop becoming the number one genre in music. Yeah, I just, I just find it crazy that he would he would say something like that, like especially with the whole kiss our feet, like you know what I mean. It's one thing to say, hey, you know, you know, salute us, you know, show us our respect for grinding and you know, doing what we do. But the whole kiss your feet, that's that's a whole another level of disrespect that we hear at the righteous uh, comes pocket. We don't condone that type of disrespect when it comes to the legends, man, because they paved the way. You know what I'm saying? We do this for them. You know what I mean? The legend is the reason why we even have a Righteous Tellers podcast. You know what I mean? Facts, facts. Honestly, to be honest, I'm not surprised though, that he said it because, to be honest, I mean, I just think a lot of these younger dudes, not all of them, have a chip on their shoulder, whether it be uh, Offset, um, I think uh, 21 Savage was saying some stuff about old rappers. You had uh, Vince Staples, who I think one time actually threatened to fight Nori. Yeah, over yeah. a comment that he made one time talking about, oh, I, I do run fades. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> this, is not, this, this, this is not that serious, you know? Why? I mean, it doesn't surprise me, man. I just I just hate that this is what it's, what it's become, especially in hip-hop, because, you know, I feel that we all need to try to lift each, lift each other up, but it seems that, you know, hip-hop, I guess that competitive nature of it, it, it kind of keeps, I don't know, it just keeps, such a combativeness even towards our OGs and the guys who really built this thing you know, right, right. helped it go on and get bigger and bigger so you know the thing that helps to build you up the competitiveness can also kind of hurt you too so it's just one of them things man and as far as Offset's album I heard it really wasn't nothing special I mean he did get a little bit more personal talking about you know his kids and, and Cardi and some of the mistakes he's made but you know, it's typical Migos type stuff. You know, I can listen to it for a little while and in a setting, but after a while, I, you know, I, I got to turn it off. So, yeah, my. You know, like I said, not my cup of tea, but, you know, it, it, you know, it's all right. Why? You know, why, why does he have a chip on his shoulder? Aren't the Migos one of the most successful groups in the past five years? It's not like, you know, dude is like, you know, a, a meager selling artist and. You know, he's been rapping for a long time and hasn't seen the level of success as his peers. Like, they're literally the most successful group out right now. So where where is the chip on the shoulder come from? Like, I don't understand well, that. Well, part of where I think it comes from is that I think deep down a lot of these artists don't feel respected by, I guess, the quote-unquote legends. I was legends just about to say that. Or, yeah. Or mm, just that's what artists, I guess, who are more regarded as lyrical rappers or, you know, just rappers. You know, a lot of these right. guys feel that... They, what they do is not respected deep down and that they're look, looked at in a, in a certain kind of way or a certain kind of category. And I think deep down it eats at them. So anytime they have a chance to say, you know, old rapper or, you know, um, you know, any, anything, anytime, you know, they call anybody old something or washed up or, yeah, y'all know the kind of phrases. Y'all, y'all know how it goes down. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're going to do that. Exactly. So, I mean, it, it, it's just sad. It's, it's petty. And you would think, like D Bell said, for you know, probably the biggest selling group right now, the biggest selling group, hip hop group, you know, that they'd be above that. But you know, it just goes to show that somewhere deep down, it sticks at them. We were talking about Drake, different kind of rapper, but yeah, you know, with the ghostwriting stuff and other things, you know. I got you. He, he probably feels a, a way, you know, that a lot of artists, you know, his peers, more respected lyricists don't fully respect him it's you know it's it's, it's, a, it's a personal thing an internal thing i think that a lot of these guys carry even though you know you can rap about your money and how many girls you got and, and this and that but I, I think deep down it sticks at quite a few of them that's just my yeah opinion. and to add to what to what um the expo said i do agree with it, it is a whole respect factor it's like you know today yeah hip hop is a more genre it's a lot of rappers that do have a lot of fans but the way the culture is set nowadays you know uh, these fans are very fair weather. You know what I'm saying? They can ride with you today and be done with you tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Very so it's like very, at very the end of the, at the end of the day, 
that respect, you know, somebody like a Jadakiss or a Redman, they're always going to have respect, no matter what. They might not sell as well as Amigos or a Little Uzi or whoever the new hot rapper is, but that respect, that legacy is always going to be there. And a lot of these rappers, they're trying, to, they're trying to find that, you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't have the loyalty of some of the fans like me. I'm always going to buy a Redman album. I don't care if he's 60 years old rapping. I'm always going to buy a Redman album. You know what I mean? No but, no like doubt. I said, wow, man. right now they do. Yeah, go ahead. One thing I was going to say too is like, you know, is hip hop being the number one genre right now necessarily the best thing? Because when you look at all the different music genres of the past, once they became number one, it's usually right before the fall. Like rock and roll. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like hip hop right. thrived right. on being the the underdog music. That's how hip hop yes. thrived. Yes. Yes. Hip hop was more provocative. Yes. Hip hop was more, you know, um, yeah, like yeah. more meaningful when it wasn't the number one genre because it was like the best Great kept point. secret. You know what I mean? So just Great because hip hop is the yeah. number one genre doesn't necessarily mean that's the best thing for the culture. Because now, Great not point. for nothing, right. hip hop is more watered down now that it's the number one genre because anybody and everybody feels like they could do it. Like I said, the spread of the internet, I think, is this is a gift and a curse. I mean, mm. it's just one of them things where it's a spread spread opportunity and it's spread opportunity for mayhem on the mic, in my opinion. And, you know, you, you see that bear out every day. I mean, for every, you know, internet sensation that rises to like, yo, really give someone a chance to really actually put something into this culture that's good, you get a, you know, a, um, <laughs> You know, that's that song that uh, D.B. was talking about. A I don't even face. like mentioning it. A Tatiana. 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 And like, and like I said, let's be real. A lot of these rappers, when they come out, they really they really don't last that long. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, look at don't. the Kendricks and the J. Coles. Right. They pull out quality music, and, they, and they've been here a good decade, and people still want to hear their music. People still want to go to their concerts and all that. Like, you got a guy like Blueface. I can't see him being popping in the next five years. Yeah, you're right. You're you right. You know, I'm... I'm, I'm a, Honestly, I, mean, he's got I, I would agree with you. Tomorrow. Honestly, I would agree with you, but the way the post is going now, who can really say? Yeah, like, he might have a long run. For a while, and then he might just decide to record himself cooking and decide to just rhyme the words that are that he's cooking with, and that might be a hit. Who knows? Right, because the youth are the ones that you know. Hip hop is a youth-driven genre. They dictate it. So if the youth are going to accept Tatiana and songs like that as the standard, then what really are we gonna do? Like, we, we're gonna become relics in, in the culture where it's like, oh yeah, there's there's tw there's there, there's that 20% of people that like that old school hip hop where they actually have bars and like real structure to their songs, but the majority is gonna be like the Blueface fans, you know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, those uh, fans are usually the fair weather fans that will watch you crash and burn, like the majority of like the six nine fans, laugh about it, make memes about it, yep. and then move on to the next yep. disposable artist, man. So absolutely. Welcome to the Righteous Tongues podcast, where we speak fluent hip hop, hosted by FDT, the BX Boy, and D Bale. For more episodes, please visit grusselmedia.com. Peace. Welcome to the Righteous Tongues Podcast, where we speak fluent hip-hop with your host, FDT. What up, y'all? It's your boy, FDT, and I got time today. Let's get it. All right. Alongside with the BX boy. Yo, yo, what up? It's the BX boy. Busy man, but never too busy for y'all. Let's get it. And I be your media art specialist, D-Bell, and you're checking out the Righteous Tongues podcast right here on GrussellMedia.com. Whether it's on the YouTube or whether it's on the site, we appreciate y'all coming to join us today. And of course, we're not going to leave you alone for too long. And with that being said, FDT, man, what is your topic for today, my brother? Well, my first topic of the day, we're going to get into it. Looks like the Soldier Boy and Tiger beef is heating up. And Tiger finally had enough and responded to Soldier Boy, which I wouldn't really call a diss track, but he had a freestyle. Um, and he did mention Soldier Boy's name. He said, uh, 9 million records So where's Soldier Boy at? You know what I mean? Mm. And, of course, typical Soldier Boy fashion with the cloud chasing, he responded immediately with not one but two diss tracks. Yeah. Um, 
he they uh they both actually freestyled off the dot town song which we were talking about <laughs> earlier <laughs> in the uh, podcast. Yeah. Um wow. I thought Tiger's I thought Tiger's verse was cool. Like Tiger Tiger can can spit. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not super lyrical but he definitely got a flow. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. I rock with Tiger since back in the, uh, flow, yeah. he had the well done um uh, mixtape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Back when he used to do shit with Chris Breezy, uh, fan of a fan mixtape. Right. Um, it, like I said, I thought I thought Tiger's freestyle was decent. Um, Soldier Boy, both diss tracks were uh, trash, in my opinion. But like I said, Soldier Boy's gonna do whatever he has to do to, to, to keep this uh, this clout train going. Hmm. Um, yeah. But even even uh, just recently broke up with. Uh, Tiger's baby mom, Black China. So, Black China. if you even call he, that a breakup, he, he, he wants all the smoke. Yeah, I can't really call it a breakup, but yeah. the publicity <laughs> stuff, which I, which I should stay. Um, he said in a tweet that he fucked Black China and played Fortnite with uh, Tiger's son, which is <laughs> yeah, that's wild disrespectful, disrespectful <laughs> in, in my opinion. Um, I don't even know where I want this to go in terms of hip hop beef because if Soldier Boy just going to keep putting out tracks like that, I, I, I don't even want to hear him. <laughs> I don't even think Tiger should respond at this point because it's not Soldier Boy is not a worthy uh, opponent when it comes to, to yeah. lyrical warfare. Yeah. Like, if you want to keep trolling them back and forth, and you know what I mean, keep it on you know Twitter, that's fine. But as far as anything on wax, I'm good off that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I, I heard that a uh, Soldier Boy diss track, man. I, th- I thought it was like a parody or a joke <laughs> of, of a track at first. I was like, it's real. Yeah. But then I remember the caliber of the artist. I'm like, no. Nah, this is typical. This is soldier. Mm. I honestly forgot I even heard it. That's how forgettable it was. <laughs> it was just, it, it was, it was trash. It's as far trash. as this whole thing, like I said, I think if Soldier Boy keeps it in the trollverse, you know, trolling him through social media and whatever, he has a better shot, much better shot than anything he could do rapping. Tiger's not the greatest rapper by any stretch, but he'd wrap circles around Soldier Boy. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much how I feel about it. You know, Soldier Boy is going to troll and say disrespectful things about his baby mother and his son, which he has. And it's interesting to see if Tiger takes the fate or if he just ignores it. So we'll see what happens. But honestly, anything with Soldier Boy, I'm just not in for, not interested in. Period. Hmm. All right. Uh, well, yeah, my thoughts on it. Um, you know, Shout out to Tiger, man. He defending himself. Uh, and I saw the LA Leakers freestyle. I thought that was cool. The fact that it was kind of like freestyle. Uh, you know, I don't know if he read it, wrote it before. I'm sure he wrote it beforehand, but I, I like that. I, 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 I respect Tiger for that. Um, you know, he, he got Soldier it. Soldier Boy can never do it. He Soldier Boy can never <laughs> do it. Uh, the first Soldier Boy freestyle over the Tatiana beat was totally uninspired. Like, he sounded dead on the track. Like, there was no energy. There was no... He sounded like he did it in the car. None. He sounded like he did it in the backseat of a yeah, car. Yeah, like... Somebody passed in the auxiliary cord and was like, yo, just, just freestyle off this real quick. Right. Record it real quick. Now, the second one, What is a Tiger to a Lion, I thought was a little bit more animated. And, you know, it, 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 that's probably the best we're going to get out of Soldier Boy. That's cool. We know he's going to troll. We know he's going to say funny things. Um, in terms of... Oh, that really of, a lion or the name of the song? What's the Tiger to a Lion? That's the name of the song. Yeah, that's the name of the song. What's the Tiger to a Lion? Wow. Um, he does and, know tigers are actually bigger than lions in, in real life. Yeah. Like a tiger would fuck a lion up in real life. Well, I think... Yeah, I, I think I think, it, I think it plays off yeah. of that. You know, the lion is the king of the jungle. You know what I'm saying? We all know that. No, nah, I, I feel... I feel you say. I just, I just, you know, had to throw that in there real quick. You yeah. Know? That's true, sir. That was, that, was, that was a nice play on words. Um, used to watch Animal Planet as a kid growing up. That's all. Don't mind me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was right there with you. Don't, don't worry. Um, but I thought the second disc had a little bit more fire to it. And yeah, you know what, Tiger, go ahead, respond, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of people that, in my opinion, don't really respect Tiger as an artist either. And I think that something like this could possibly uh, raise his status a little bit, especially among those as we just talked about hip hop elitists. So. I think it's a good look for Tiger. You know what I'm saying? We all know that he's a more lyrical artist than Soldier Boy, but if Soldier Boy want to keep taking shots and this is causing them to get some type of buzz, is giving Tiger a little bit of buzz, why not, man? Go ahead, put the nail in the coffin. I mean, Soldier Boy has made himself uh, one of the top trending artists of 2019, and if that's going to give Tiger some light as an artist, why not, man? I mean, me personally, I'm not rushing to the internet to check for it like the BX Boy. 
I could really care less, but I'm going to listen to him just out of curiosity. And, um, you know, it, it is what it is, man. This, this is where we at. Like We're I said, I, I, I would have generation. cared to listen to more. But once I heard that that freestyle, I was like, yo, this guy is dead. And he's not nice enough to just be so monotone and just. Yeah, I feel you. Just so, like, you know, you you got to overcompensate for something. Like Meek Mill, for example, he's not nice with the lyrics, but he overcompensates by kind of screaming on the track, you know, bringing the energy. <laughs> I'm, 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 I don't know if I can co-sign that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's true. It's true. I mean, I mean look, I, I'm, I'm not comparing to Soulja, but I've, obviously he, he's definitely a lot better than him. But I'm saying, compared to someone like a Cassidy when he was battling him, I mean, I know, one guy was was clear and concise and just hitting you with bars. The other guy, he threw a bar in there every now and then, but he was mostly over emotional. He was, you know. Just bringing the energy that was, that was his strength. I got you. I got you. Know? You. you know that's understandable, Feel man. Feel free to disagree, FTC. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, and we all have our opinions on what we look at as top tier lyricism. And the BX boy, you know, your standards are very high, bro. And and I respect that about you, cousin. Like you, you are not going to just accept the status quo. You know what I mean? Now, in terms of Meek nah. Mill, comparing to Meek Mill to like a 90s uh, top tier lyricist, y you can't really do it. But Meek Mill is... Nah, I wouldn't. Nah, I wouldn't. Yeah. Meek Mill is definitely, I would say, one of the top lyricists of today's generation in comparison to the Uzi Verts and the, the other rappers in that category. Oh, without question. Without question. But, without um, question. But I, I, I like some of his music too, but I mean, I just understand... I know what you're what saying. What he brings, what his strengths are, yeah. I got you. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So, yeah. um, all right, next topic, BX Boy, man. What you got, bro? Yeah, man. I tried to kind of stay away from this for a while, but, I mean, this is all over the news. And, yeah. I mean, you know, this is a guy who's impacted all of our childhoods with his music. For sure. And that is Mr. Robert Kelly mm. and everything that's going on with him. Right, right. Break it down. And I, and I think the thing that really inspired me to kind of talk about this just a little bit was I was watching... I was on YouTube, you know, just browsing through some old R. Kelly, and I came across an interview he had. I think it was on BET. I don't remember what program it was, but it was in the early 90s, and it was with Aaliyah. Okay. And I think this is when they were marketing her album, uh, AJ, Nothing But a Number, the one where he's on the cover with her. Right. And uh, in the it was background, just very... like a creeper. <laughs> yeah, and I, and, I, and I was just watching that interview, and I remember it was just very awkward, and I remember the interview interviewer um asked Aaliyah about the nature of the relationship oh yeah like who is he to you is, is he like uh like your friend or like your uncle and like no he was like she was like uh he's one of my best friends in the whole world and she kind of tapped his shoulder and R. Kelly's just kind of like smiling I know exactly what interview you're talking about yeah yeah I know yeah, what you're talking about yeah. Yeah. I they had the Mickey like, Mouse wow. notch and outfits on yeah and all yeah that. yeah there you go there you I go. thought and I'm thinking like wow how did this escape the radar like nobody asked questions when Aaliyah first came out the whole mystique behind her was that nobody really knew what her age was but I don't think that anybody could look at that situation regardless if she was 14 or whether she was 17 I don't think anybody could look at that situation and say that you know it was cool for there to be a suggestion that R. Kelly could perhaps be messing with her you know what I mean? The fact that that was so mysterious that people didn't know what role they played is disgusting, I believe. You know what I'm saying? But we were kids. Yeah. I'm 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 one year younger than Aaliyah. So we we were kids back then. So just looking at it, we didn't look at it in that context. Now as a grown man, I'm looking at it and I'm watching that same interview as you, BX boy, and I'm saying, "What the hell was going on?" Like People didn't pick up on this, but we didn't know that they were sleeping together. We didn't know that. Yeah, but but what I'm wondering is, what about the adults? I'm not not necessarily you, um, right? Uh, Bell, but yeah. adults like that were around at that time. Like nobody in the media or whatever really. And I know the media is not what it is now. Right. Like, not nobody like really. Now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it was still around. It's like, it's like yeah, nobody like no social, I mean, no, yeah. no social networks. You know what I mean? It was just it was a different time period, man. And I'm not yeah. saying that it was acceptable. I think that if they would have came out and said we are dating, we are having sexual relations, it would have caused controversy. But nobody really knew, and I think it was like like the mystique that of about them two 
they were able to just kind of play it off. Like, and, and most logical people's mind, people are saying there's no way that they're sleeping together. Like, there's no way that that's actually right. happening, even though allegedly it was. But I just, I mean, like I said, it's it's it's, wow. it's a crazy situation. When I look at it, the BX yeah. boy, yeah. Um, like I said, I'm one year younger than Aaliyah. So when I think about R. Kelly and the impact that his music has had on my life and my time period, it's you we yeah. can't we can't really remove R. Kelly from the situation easily because my high school um senior anthem was I believe I could fly. Our whole uh, theme for that yeah, I year. I graduated to that. I I, I graduated I graduated to that. To that. <laughs> My theme on our yeah, t-shirts man. was I Believe I Could Fly. Everything was I Believe I Could Fly. <laughs> Every single thing that year. That song was everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. When I when I think about when 12 Play came out, 93, 94, that's like the beginning of my high school, you know, adolescence coming into that maturity type of life. When we're first learning right. about sex and we're learning about, you know, all of these different things as a man going through puberty, the songs that I'm hearing that are... Like in influencing me are the R. Kelly songs. We know Kelly, we know yeah, when we're with yeah. a young when we're with a young lady our age, we want to set the mood, R. Kelly or Jodeci. Yeah, like seems like you're ready. Yeah, that's that's the whole the theme gist of it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think that's why a lot of people have a hard time separating uh or they have an easier time separating his music from him because the music was such a part of our lives. You know what I mean? But right, right. Um, and I don't know where you were going with the topic, BX Boy. Were you just like, were you going to talk about the charges? Or what, what, what were you going to get into? But actually, I was also going to mention what you're getting into now. And is that, you know, is removing R. Kelly from, from the equation, is it possible? Because I think if the Me Too movement has its way, they pretty much they, they want to try to wipe out every vestige of this guy that they can. Mm. And while I understand that on some level, I don't know if that's possible. Because I remember I was talking to some coworkers at work, and they was like, "Yeah, he he did that nasty shit." But you know what? Like when it's time to, you know, when it's time to get down with the man or whatever, or the or the woman, you know, R. Kelly's gonna be playing, and that's <laughs> just what it is. Oh man! You know, I mean, that's, that's what a bunch of them would say. You know, they was like, "Yo, you know, we 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 get the outrage and all of that, but yo, you know, when it's Time to get down, man. There's only only but a few names that you're gonna think of. And R. Kelly, he's 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 top five. I mean, yeah. And then and then and then where do you remove it at? I mean, R. Kelly has also written some of the most popular songs of the generation. I was listening, I was watching some old um Michael Jackson joints the other day, and I was watching Michael Jackson perform um You Are Not Alone Live, and I was like, wow. That song is so they powerful. Come with that mic too, right? Yeah, you know what I mean. And even yeah. even Mike is catching yeah. some 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 straight bullets right now. So, I think, you know, I don't know, man. It's it's a very tough situation. If R. Kelly is guilty of what he's being accused of, then he deserves the consequences behind it, without a doubt. In terms of his music, I feel like honestly that'll be a personal thing for everybody else to kind of determine. You're gonna have those people that right. are gonna throw away all his music. And you're going to have those people that are going to say, you know what? I still love his music. I don't like what he did, but I'm going to still bump his music. So I think it's more of a personal decision in terms of what we're going to do. But I don't think you can like erase R. Kelly's um, discography from the genre unless we start I looking agree. at... We look at Jerry Lee Lewis, who was also accused of sleeping with I younger agree. people. Elvis Presley, who Elvis. married. You know, yeah. So if we're going to look at R. Kelly's discography and say we're going to have to get rid of it, then there's going to be a whole lot of other musicians we're going to have to get. We have to give them that same energy. We can't just say, you know, single out R. Kelly and then let Elvis rock. You know what I'm saying? So, right, you right. know, I don't know, man. It's 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 um it's it's a it's a tricky situation, man. It really is. But it's a very tricky situation is to try to you know separate the the artists from their outside life to the music. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like to me, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, I did grow up listening to R. Kelly. I do like a lot of his older songs, but I haven't really listened to any R. Kelly songs in years. So, mm. you know, Boycott a Band, if he put something new out, he hasn't put out a really good song in a while either. Right, right. You know what I mean? So yeah, even yeah. when I did watch the document, it just made me want to listen to the old R. Kelly music. Mm, yeah. And then before that, I haven't bothered to listen to any R. Kelly music in years. So, like I said, like he's, it's to each his own. Um, if I'm at a party and the ignition come on, am I going to not dance to it? Probably, probably not. 
Right. I might dance to. Who knows? It depends on how I feel. It depends how the drinks hit me. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> but other than that, um, I, if he does what he did and, I, and, you know, and he's guilty, he just needs to serve his time. This is the last thing I'm going to say about it. The only yeah. thing I also want to say about it is this. Is that what impact do you think the Chappelle skit and also, um, yeah, the Chappelle skit and also the Boondocks episode had on, you know, maybe these allegations or how people felt about R. Kelly? Well, obviously they were bad because uh, mm -hmm. R. Kelly ran down on, on Chappelle, I heard. Got his goons to run yeah, down on he Chappelle. Tried to fight so. him. Yeah. yeah, he said that. Yeah, so obviously it, it made an impact. Yeah, I, I, I think it was I, funny as fuck. Yeah, I definitely but. think it made an impact. Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it, it's like it it even that that's old, you know what I mean? Like and if it was just a rumor, I don't think it would have made that much of an impact, but the fact that allegedly it was true that this is what this man is doing even though he was found to be innocent in a court of law, I think it definitely yeah. had an impact because a lot of other people watch Chappelle's show that don't necessarily listen to our type of music. So it expanded right. R. Kelly's like uh, reach even further. Like people were like, well, who is this R. Kelly? And guy? not only and, that, their, their first their first interaction of knowing about him is something negative and nasty like that. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. That, that just damaged. Wow. All right. Well, you can close the book on the chapter of R. Kelly. Let's let's <laughs> get into something else. Your your topic, which is actually very interesting, is something that's hitting a lot of rappers. Yeah, man. And their associates very hard. Yeah, man, we're talking about, um, according to QueensEagle.com and a couple other sources, y'all can go ahead and Google that. Violent rap lyrics and videos can now be used as evidence. Uh, the U.S. appeals courts uh, rules that in the case of Ronald Rod Diggs Heron, who was a rapper from Brooklyn, New York, and an alleged uh, gang leader uh, who was convicted oh, wow. of a couple of murders. Yeah, Rod Diggs was down with Uncle Murder. That was one of his running mates yeah. when he was out rapping. And Rod Diggs got sentenced to a couple life sentences, and he tried to appeal his conviction on the grounds that his music and promotional videos related to his rap career were uh, erroneously admitted into evidence. And they said that federal prosecutors used his lyrics to bolster the case against Rod Diggs, who was charged with murdering several rivals uh, in Brooklyn um, with his alleged drug trade from the late 90s all the way up until 2011. And um, wow. so during his appeal, the court basically said, oh, no, nah, we can we can basically use your lyrics um, and your videos against you. And they basically um, use an example of one of Rod Diggs songs that he had with um, ATL rapper Queen slash ATL rapper Waka Flocka. And uh, it was called Live by the Gun. And that was the bars that they are using to uh, basically deny his appeal um, for him to, you know, get a new trial. And they're basically saying, you are what you are rapping. And I think it definitely uh, sets a, a, a precedent where now, you know, rappers really have to be careful um, about what they're doing and they have to also understand that uh, that whole oh this is just entertainment line that they like to use when they're spitting out these types of bars will not stand in a court of law and it's it's a dangerous right. era and I, I look at uh, like yeah. a lot of the young rappers um, especially the young rappers that have gang affiliations we already talked about the 6 9 situation and how that has impacted the culture and unfortunately I think we're going to see a lot more uh, situations where on a federal level, um, these rappers are going to be held accountable for their rap lyrics. Um, so how do you guys feel about that? Well, like you said earlier, if you, if you thought the hip-hop genre is watered down, it's going to be even more watered down because now rappers are really going to have to watch what they say if they are, in fact, actually committing the crimes that they talk about. Um my thing is, how far back does this go? Is this something that's going to just go on from, you know, for rap music that's going on forward? Or are they going to go back in the past and, and uh, you know, try to convict rappers from the 90s from saying some ill ass shit? Mm. Yeah. Mm. How you feel, BX Boy? They can boy? do that? Wait, say again? Hold on. I'm saying, are they, I mean, is this going to go forward with new rap? Or is this like, could they go back and, let's say, like, you know, pull something from the 90s and, and say, like, oh, uh... Um, you know, so and so rapper said this from the '90s, and you know he should go to jail now. 
Um, no, it's, 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 it, it could be, it can be brought back to that. So let's say our favorite nineties rapper, God forbid, commits a heinous crime. They can go back and they can use that and they will use that. It says that the constitution does not wow. prohibit the evidentiary use of speech to establish the elements of crime or to prove motive or intent. So they're going to the constitution and they're saying the constitution doesn't prohibit us to, to use your songs against you, even though. Obviously, when the Constitution was written, they didn't have hip hop in mind, but they're using the Constitution in order to prove that this is why they can use your lyrics against you. Um, as long as your use of as long as your as your use of speech establishes the element of a crime or to prove motive or intent, they can use that against you. So, yeah, that that that's where we stand, man. And uh, well, I'm trying to somebody think. Needs to hide, somebody needs to hide the Wu Tang claim. Quit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. Didn't this trip up a GS9, you know, Bobby Smurder's crew? Definitely. With some of the lyrics that they were saying on, I think, Hot Nigga. And definitely. Yeah. Definitely, man. But yeah. A couple, a, a couple of them brothers, you know, they, they got football numbers. Super football numbers. To borrow a phrase, you know? I mean, it was it was crazy. Yeah, man. I mean, based on some of the things I think that um, Bobby and uh, Rowdy were rapping, like, you know, they were basically rapping, rapping out crimes that were carried out, I guess, by various people in the crew. And next thing you know, they they get these huge numbers. It's like, whoa! Yeah, and man. You got the Takashi situation, and it's it's crazy, man. I, I'll be curious to see, you know, how how far they go with this, because I mean, I'm I'm still curious, though. I mean, how 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 they really judge, you know, facts from fiction in in, in these rhymes. But I'm guessing. They have a lot of co cooperating evidence to go with, I guess, whatever's said on the record. But right, wow, this is, so, this, this, this is crazy, man. This, this is really new territory. I think it is. And, uh, yeah, definitely. This is, it's, kind of, it's kind of scary, really. Now, in, do, you think, do you think newer rappers will try to switch up their styles now? I don't. I, I, talk I think about I, uh, I, 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 criminal activities I, now. I think the smart ones will. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I, I think the ones that are just not aware enough, or just don't care, or just ignorant, you know, they'll continue to do the same old stupid thing. Right. And right. Don't could be this surprised have a, when they get caught, caught up, caught out there. Could this have a positive outlook on hip hop? I mean, people would have um, to change up their whole dialect and their whole. Well, you know what I'm saying. They have to change the subjects and the, everything. I mean, they rap now. Way, here's the I thing. Mean, here's the, the I, here's the thing. T, uh, just so you know. Um, FDT, this is not like they're just going through rap songs and saying, oh, you rapped about a body, uh, you rapped about shooting somebody, we're going to pull you out of your home and put you on trial. This is not that kind of situation. What they're saying is if you commit a crime, if you kill somebody that they and you're a rapper, they can go to your lyrics and see if there is a connotation or a connection. So, you know, as long as you're not out there doing stuff, then you're fine. You can rap about whatever you're rapping about. But if you happen to catch a body, then they're going to start looking into your rap lyrics. So we don't have to hide the Wu-Tang Clan as long as the Wu-Tang Clan is not out there committing any uh, murders or any crimes. So it, it's, not, it's not just, oh, this guy rapped about murdering somebody, let's bring him into court. No, it's not that. But what they're saying is if you're caught in the commission of a crime and you happen to be a rapper, that they can use your rap lyrics against you. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what they're saying. So I hope that changes the context of, of a little bit. I don't think that uh, rappers are going to stop rapping about catching bodies. However, they will use it. What's my man's name? Lauren, this Florida rapper YNW Melly, as well as another man, are being held here at the Broward County Jail this morning. They are each charged with two counts of first degree murder, and they're also accused of, as you said, staging this crime scene to appear as though it was a drive by shooting. He just got um, arrested for the murder of two friends. They can use those lyrics against him because he actually was uh, being accused of murdering his two friends and then. Ironically, he has a song about killing his friends, you know, so they're going to use that against wow. him. So it, it just, it depends yeah, on the situation. Dumbass. <laughs> it's important. Well, yeah, the smart it ones, stupid like the BX boy yeah. said, the smart ones will do the right thing and the dumb ones will continue to be dumb. Change. And, you know, the and hopefully they catch all the dumb rappers. That's what I'm praying for. <laughs> <laughs> like Word I up. said, man, that's, 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 that's crazy. Dumb, that, you know, it just feels like... Uh, Wow, that's just crazy to me. But yeah, man, we'll see who who ships up, who shapes up and uh, smarts up. But you know, 
All right. Wow. So um, just on another note, I think we can start the honorable mentions now. We're almost about an hour in already, believe it or not. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just rotate it in the opposite direction. So I'll start off with my honorable mention first. And then the BX boy can do his. And then FDT can end off the show with his. Um, my honorable mention today, ladies and gentlemen out there listening, is the dog is back. DMX, he's back in the studio with Swiss Beats. Um, Swiss Beats okay. posted on his IG the other day. Uh, the dog is back in the studio. He's looking healthier than ever. And uh, me personally, I'm looking forward to see, you know, what DMX and uh, Swiss could cook up. It's, it, I feel old. I ain't going to hold you because I was looking through the comments and I saw a lot of people saying, yo, Uncle X, yo, Uncle X, he rooting for you. And I said, wow, you know, once rappers start getting the uncle uh, surname, it's like, you know, you really start okay. feeling old, especially, you know, when I was a young teenager coming up and listening to DMX, it's like, now he's an uncle. Wow, man, I know yeah, I'm getting yeah, old. Yeah, Just like Uncle Snoop. When I hear the Uncle Snoop comments, I'm like, that's crazy because hey. I remember Snoop being a yeah. young dude, you know what I mean, in, in the What's My Name video and... You know, it's just yeah, one of those yeah, things, man. Yeah, crazy, right? Yeah, but I'm I'm rooting for DMX. Um, he is uh, hands down one of the realest rappers, in my opinion, of all time. He always brought a lot Definitely. of substance to his bars, um, and Definitely. you know, he always dropped a lot of jewels, and just was just one of the most entertaining rappers. And I'm 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 rooting for him. You know, what I mean, I, we 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 lived in Yonkers for a number of years, me and my brother. Uh, so you know, it's just like that that. That hometown affiliation, but yeah, we, connection, yeah. rooting for X, and we know that Swiss Beats and X definitely have cooked up some classics over the years. So I'm glad it's good to see that camaraderie between you know two long term friends. Like no matter what X has been through, Swiss has been a constant with X. You know what I mean? And 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 that's that's a beautiful situation. Just on some on some black brotherhood, you know, making sure that your your, your man's is good. Yo, I, I definitely respect Swiss Beats and, and Rough Riders, man, all day, every day. So how y'all feel about that? Definitely. I totally agree with everything that you said. And the good thing about him being with Swiss is that Swiss is in a really mature and place right now. And hopefully some of that could really kind of rub off on X, you know, facts. that is struggling. Facts, but, facts. You know, it's just a great thing, you know, like I said, to see brothers sticking together and even though X is, been the hell and back, you know, he's, he's still standing, and like you said, he looks healthy, he looks great, so hopefully he can hit the world with some new music and just, you know, just be the innovative and great artist that he is, man. I mean, whenever you went to a DMX show or you just saw a performance by him, you knew he was going to get quality, he was going to get substance, might get a prayer out of it too, you know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then a sermon, but I mean, he's just one of the realest and genuine dudes, and, uh, yeah, man, I'm just looking forward to seeing what he does next. And uh, but you're right. Whenever they throw the uncle label on you, they they trying to trying to put you in your wheelchair. They trying to you know. <laughs> so, well, you know, we'll see what happens. But you know, you could also look at it at the terms of like, yo, you've been in this game a long time. You accomplished a lot, and you know, wear that title with pride, man. I'm with you, man. Sure. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Facts. FTT. Like I said, just looking forward to hearing some new music from DMX. You know what I'm saying? I've always been a fan. Um, like I said, hopefully Swiss Beats gets some right in the studio. Uh, hopefully the, the music doesn't sound dated. I mean, I want the, the 90s, you know, DMX, the essence of it, but I still want to sound current as well. No doubt. Can, I, uh, I, 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 you know I think with Swiss, you don't like have to worry about that. Right. Yeah, me too. True. Swiss True. is main. Swiss has stayed up to date. Um, you know, and he's been he's been current. It's not like we haven't heard a Swiss project in, in ten years. We don't know what to expect. This is true. Yeah. Swiss has been yeah, producing with true. little little Wheezy. Um, you know, Nas he produced on the last Nas album. Um, well, not yeah. on the last Nas album, but he had Nas on his album, the uh, the Poison album yeah. that Swiss just dropped. So Swiss has stayed relevant with new and older artists, and his sound has been current and he has a major hit record this year with, with Lil Wayne although it's the same type of beat as special delivery but you know Swiss is I think he's kept himself relevant throughout the uh throughout the eras man yeah, Swiss has, has he has a good ear for me so I thought he won't be an ex long I think he'll have him on the right track for him and something that that'll appeal to people now so I I think he's in good hands yeah me too me too bro I have to agree with you on that 
All right. So for my topic, my topic is uh, Cardi yeah. B and Bruno Mars. Your, 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 your honorable the, uh, mention. Your honorable mention. My honorable mention. Excuse me. Honorable mention. It's Cardi B and Bruno Mars reconnecting on the uh, Please Me uh, song and the video. That's a dope song. <laughs> which, I, which I must say, I liked a lot more than I thought I would. It was, so it was like a nice 90s throwback, too. It, it, it does feel like really, a 90s throwback song. They yeah. really seem to kind of thrive on that. You had the uh, the uh, Finesse remix, I believe, before, and now you have this. So, uh, you know, they really seem to have a good working chemistry together. And I really enjoyed the song, liked the video. And I have to say, the song reminded me of uh, a couple of old uh, uh, R&B 90s songs. Uh, yeah. I think the Swiss song with a case and a Foxy Brown, I think Touch Me, Tease Me. Mm. Reminded me a little bit of that. Okay. Reminded me of, of a couple of others. I'm blanking on the name, but it's just kind of a, a mix of, of, of a few 90s songs. It just kind of kind of gave me that vibe. With, with the new school twist, obviously. But it, you yeah. Know. Um, jo- so Joe to see Fiending came to mind for me. When I heard it, oh yeah, Jodis, that's another Fiend, one too. Yeah. Fiend, man, Fiend, it kind of, it kind of like had that vibe for me. <laughs> but yeah, like I mean, you know, I can't be mad. No, like, I can see that. I can see that. Like Bruno Mars yeah, yeah, is yeah. is super talented. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people was like, oh, they yeah. they biting off the '90s vibes, but you know, Bruno is paying homage to it in 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 a in a beautiful way, man. Like the dude could really sing. Yeah. Like he's he's talented. So. And Cardi B, and it sounds good. It sounds good. Like I, I can't. I, I like the song too. I like the song. I like the video. Yo, BX, BX boy, man. Like I, you know, this is this is this is a song that the hip hop elitists might turn their nose down on. But this is also yeah. what separates us from that. Where it's like our podcast, we definitely appreciate the contributions of the newer artists. We're not like a bunch of old heads that's like. You know, no, you just keep your yeah, notes up and everything. Yeah. Right, we're you know what I mean? Them. We're not condemning them. So not when you all. when you listen to the Righteous Tongues podcast, ladies and gentlemen, you you're getting you're getting a piece of the hip hop elitism because we we were from that era, we're from that 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 grain, but we also can show and recognize that we appreciate the contributions of the newer artists. So this record, all of us are feeling this record. You know what I mean? So yeah, man, this this is this is this is fire, man, and it definitely gives you good vibes. You know what I'm saying? So. At the end of the day, that's one thing I love about hip hop. Like, people look at hip hop for like, like um, FDT was saying earlier. Sometimes hip hop gets um, cut off in terms of like, oh, it's just gangster rap. It's gangster music. They all just want to sell drugs and kill each other. But there's also another part of hip hop that's like fun loving, uh, makes us dance. We having a good time. We're enjoying it. We're not trying to hate on each other when we hear it. So this is another part of hip hop where. It's just feel good records, man. Where we could just enjoy it, enjoy the vibe of it. We don't have to be so, uh, we don't have to criticize it so much. This is this is another part of hip hop. So we definitely can appreciate right. this record, man. It's, it's a dope record, definitely. hands down, straight up. And they just, and they just got good chemistry, you know. And good I point. think it's a budding, budding, you know, professional relationship where they able to kind of, you know, kind of, you know, get on each other's tracks and just, you know, just elevate it. And I just think that's just, just a good look for both of them. So, yeah, man. Hopefully they'll do more, you know? Or I'm with you on that. What right. you think, FDT? Like I said, I like the song a lot. Like, when I first heard it, I, I, I fucked with it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I said, I just recently saw the video. I think I saw the video yesterday. Mm. I like the video. You know what I'm saying? I, I rock with Cardi B. Like you said, Bruno Mars is talented. Dude can sing. I look forward to more tracks with them two on there. You know what I mean? I think they're on tour, actually. Or they're going to be on tour. Uh... Sometime in the future, like I said, if they ever come to my area, I'll definitely uh, check out the concert. Yeah, they went on tour um, but, last year too. Um, before Cardi I think they had canceled the baby. it though, because I think I think Cardi yeah, posted pregnant, on right? tour, but she was pre- she had the baby, so she canceled it. I think. Now they I had a couple shows. Look it up. They had a couple shows. They, they might had a couple shows. Yeah, okay. they had a couple shows. They didn't. They didn't do they the full finished tour. the whole tour like they wanted to. Though. Nah, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. To my knowledge. <laughs> The interesting thing now is that before, you know, she was still trying to, like, really come into her own as an artist. Now she's fully established, so she'd be able to, she really she got, got her own, own sneaker with Reebok now, yo. Like, she got her own, she's and winning. she's, she's a Grammy. fucking winning. She's a Grammy Award she's winning. A Grammy Award winning. Oh, yep. That's you know right. So she, Something Nicki Minaj cannot say, but no Woo! shade there. <laughs> Peace to the Righteous Tongues podcast. This is the honorable mention report. Let me get oh, let me get into my uh my honorable mention, man. No doubt. Uh, this is a cool honorable mention. Um, 
It's crazy, yo, but we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of Back That Ass Up by Juvenile. Oh, let's oh, get it. Wow. So it's about 20 about years it. later, it'll be. and it's still a banger. Like, you will still hear this song in the club today. It doesn't matter how, like, yeah. even the younger generation fucks with this song. Everybody fucks timeless. with this song. Timeless. It's timeless. Um, shout out to Manny Fresh for, for creating the beat. Yeah. Like, as soon as chicks hear it, like as soon as, as soon as they hear it, we drop them in the nine. Cash money, what is it, cash money? Uh, 99, Take 2000s. it over for the nine nine into the two thousands. As soon as they hear that shit, it's like they drop whatever they're doing and they run to the dance floor. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I just was at my high school reunion uh, a few months ago. And that song came on and everybody went crazy. Like, it's, it's, it's just a dope song, man. Um, like I said, shout out to Cash Money in the 90s for, for creating that shit. It's a, it's a timeless classic. Yeah, man, it's timeless. And, and Juvenile and Birdman just recently just dropped a new joint together, man. Um, you know, Juvenile is back with Cash Money now. Uh, I'm one of those guys that grew up in New Jersey, born in New York, but I loved Cash Money Records since 98 since 99 um that was like the end of the high school for me to begin in the college so you know cash money definitely has a huge influence in my life um with the music and manny fresh is top five for me in terms of production um he produced a lot of those cash money hits um so that's a joint that like you said is timeless uh fdt uh i love the album um that was on juveniles 400 degrees classic album in my opinion um, definitely one, one, one of the first Southern artists uh, or just Southern labels that really started breaking bread with the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? You remember, uh, you know, Jay-Z was on the Juvenile High remix. So that was just a huge explosion. Uh, also, Cash Money and Rough Riders went on tour together. So Cash Money definitely... Juvie, Juvie and, um, and Drag, drag on, on. Drag Down On, bottom. yeah. Down Bottom, drag you know bottom. what I'm saying? That's my shit. So yeah, like Juvenile was one of those first... He was like one of the first Southern artists that I feel like really gathered respect um, coast to coast. Because, you know, a lot of East Coast uh, artists and listeners were just very elitist against, you know, the South. We could talk about that in depth another time. But I feel like Juvenile was one of those first artists that was embraced. Although his style was like totally different. Um, but the song just, it crossed over everywhere, you know what I'm saying? It crossed over color lines, it crossed over uh, music genres, like you would hear back that ass up anywhere and everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, salute to them for having a timeless classic joint, man, for real, for real. Yeah, man, I like a lot of the Cash Money movement too. I caught some of that, you know, beginning high school with Manny Fresh and Doozy and the beginnings of uh, Little Wayne. And, Show. You know, I think BG, I think Turk, you know, yep. all of them. Yeah. Hot Boy. Just the whole New Orleans, just the whole New Orleans music scene, because you know he was getting music numb from you know, uh, I think Master P and, and no his, limit, his, no his limit, his crew, all of them. Yeah. yeah. No limit. So it was just. It was a big time for that part. It was that part man. of the South, you know, to really just drop and banger after banger. So yeah, man, and that record is always gonna be this that record will never not be classic, man. Sure. <laughs> and again, and trust me, they will get on the dance floor when you play that record. Yeah, man. You and Juvie was one of the breakout stars too. Yeah, yeah, he, he had a couple joints, and you're right. That 400 degrees, that, that, that record was fire. I like that. Yeah, yeah, man. I like that. I like that. I remember, and I, I'm not gonna. I wasn't too big on the South at that time. Mm -hmm. But there was a couple of records I was banging. Anything Outkast put out, a lot of the Cash Money stuff I would listen to. No doubt. So yeah, they, they was putting out some quality material. Manny Fresh, he had some dope beats. He was, he was, he was killing on the production. And and he produced. I don't I don't know if I'd have him quite top five, but I, I understand. Top. I understand. And and the fact that he that's produced funny. everything that came yeah, out, top five, that's it. everything that came out. Well, that's just that's my personal. He's in my personal top five. Yeah. And I can understand the arguments yeah. against it, but when I look at the production and the output, you're talking about like twenty, almost twenty albums within a ten year period that Manny Fresh produced on. So. I gotta give him that. He was the in-house producer, sort of like RZA was for Wu-Tang. There was no guest producers. It was just all Manny. And I think that his sound diversified from project to project, whether it was a BG project or a juvenile project, he just, he brought his A-game. So that's just my personal opinion. But um, yo, man, this is the Righteous Tongues Podcast, man. We appreciate y'all, you know, coming and check us out. 
Um, once again, we're going to give y'all some engaging topics every time we come around. At one point, uh, we want to do a live show. We even want to like maybe open up the phone line, you know, for people to call in. So we're working on a lot of different avenues, you know, to uh, finalize the structure of what we're doing here. But we greatly appreciate, like FTT said earlier today, like all the subscribers, all the friends and family that's been checking us out. Um, we we yeah. we give our heart to this man. Like you, if you can't tell by now, we are definitely passionate about hip hop. And uh, we want y'all to be passionate as well. So if you have any comments, you know, even if it's constructive criticism, uh, feel free to just drop a comment on the website or drop a comment on the YouTube page, man. And we, we take everything into mind, yo. And if you have a topic that you feel like we should be covering, definitely drop a line on, on the YouTube page and just let us know what you would like to see us cover. Any last words? Yo, bro? man, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate all the support and feedback. Like I said, man, just subscribe, like, share. You know what I mean? Trying to get that ball moving. So, again, appreciate everything everybody's done for us so far to get here. Love all y'all. We out. Yeah, the BX boy. Yeah, y'all. It's the BX boy. just want to say, once again, we appreciate y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for watching us through our growing pains as we get bigger and better. Thanks yeah. for family and friends who consistently check us out. We've got more to come. For this. And, you know, just keep sticking with us, man, because we, we coming, man. We coming for every other podcast show out there. We're going to be number one. So Word. watch us rise. Watch us rise. All right. And I'll be a media art specialist, D. Bell. Once again, uh, we'll give a big shout out to Illustrious Entertainment. Uh, their industry Tuesdays, every third Tuesday of the month at Miss Harlem on 116th Street. Um, they've been pr promoting our podcast, The Righteous Tongues, and my personal podcast, The Convo, on each and one and every of their showcases. So we definitely appreciate that. And once again, like, uh, you know, the VX boy just stated, hey, ain't no competition, dog. You know what I'm saying? If you love hip hop, it's where you should be, man. Checking us out right us here. and everybody else. Yeah. Love. On the Righteous Tongues podcast where we speak fluent hip hop. Until next time, everybody. Peace and love. See ya.